Hey, what's going on guys? Just uh, having a little snack here on the new P Bandai HG UC Gundam 05. The 04 came out months and months ago and we were wondering when they were going to put out the 5 here as well too and they finally did and it looks awesome of course. It's going to be basically pretty much similar to the 04 except that it's got a different main weapon. That's kind of the only really main difference. There's a couple of small differences in like the chest armor is slightly different. Obviously the color is different, uh, but we can see that it's going to be, for the most part, basically the same case. So of course we'll compare them in the review portion, but for now let's go ahead and check out the box and its contents. So of course naturally with this being a premium Bandai kit, we have just a pretty standard box with not a whole lot to see around here on the sides of that. You do have a little bit of information here about the Gundam side story it looks like. Uh, and then here on the front, just the Gundam, and it's kind of interesting that they didn't put the Gundam 04 in there, like in the background image as well too or something, but I guess... You know, I guess they couldn't put that one in there. Anyway, so there's not really too much else to see on here on the outside of the box. I will give you a quick peek at that little bit of information there, just in case anyone's interested, but let's go ahead and get the box open up. And as you can see, not really a huge box, but there is a good amount of parts in here. It looks like you're gonna have some stickers, but of course, no water slide decals. And our instructions going to be all black and white, no color instructions for this, unfortunately, so just gonna be very simple. Here on the front, we do have our color guide there that is in Japanese and in English if you want to read uh, the official color mixes for this. On the back side is our parts list here. And uh, let's see, where's the start of the construction? So otherwise, it's basically just all construction, that's it. Just kind of goes through all of that, how to equip the weapons, everything. At the very last bit here, it looks like there's just showing you where the stickers are meant to be placed on that. This is kind of the only photograph in the manual that you have, just a black and white photograph there of like the top of the body, the front of the shield, just to show you where the stickers go. And that's really kind of about it. So let's just uh, check out the runners. All right, so we've got some regular stickers, marking stickers there for your main markings for the suit. And you have a couple of options there with the thoroughbred markings and all that. And then you have your pretty large foil sticker sheet here, unfortunately, as we saw with the Gundam 04, you have these big massive stickers for the shield parts. These for the body, which are pretty small, not as much going on here, just basically for the eyes, the head camera has a couple little accents around there on the body, so that's not too bad. But the shield is kind of the main culprit of taking a lot of those big red stickers. And our polycaps here, PC002 for those there in gray. And then we've got runner SB13 for our clear pink beam saber effect parts. And our A runner here is going to be all of our white armor parts for on the arms, legs, backpack, torso, head. Then runner A2 is a copy of this section of the runner there. Runner B1 is going to be all of our red parts. Then we do also have runner B2, which is a copy of this half of the runner right here. Runner C1 here is in this dark metallic gray color, and we do have also C2, which is a copy of this portion of the runner up here for some hand parts and some joint kind of frame parts. Same thing here on the D runner, but this one is including some parts that are exclusive for this version of the kit. For example, these parts up here for the Gatling gun and the different parts for the torso, as I mentioned. So a couple of these parts are specific for this version. Then we do also have runner D2, which is a copy of these parts right up here. Runner E1 is going to be our yellow accents for the kit, including the V-fin on there, which is in this nice, slightly orangish yellow color. And we do also have runner E2 for a copy of this half of the runner. And runner G here in white is our shield and tank parts. You can see the shield is very nicely detailed, just unfortunately missing that color separation. And then runner H is in four different colors. You have some light gray down here for the ammo drum. You have a uh, kind of medium gray up there for the belt part, which is in a softer plastic that will go to the Gatling gun. And then a darker gray over here for some more backpack and weapons parts, back of the shield parts on there for the just main regular beam rifle. And then white here for some more parts of the Gatling gun. So yeah, as you guys can see there, not a really very large box, but there's a lot of parts packed into there. It's a really nice kit. Uh, it's just missing some color separation on the shield, but for the most part, the color separation on this kit is really rather good. Let me go ahead and get this built up and then we'll take a look and see also how it compares to the Gundam 04. All right, here is the kit all built up, and I don't know if it's just because I've already built the kit once before, but this kit went together really fast, or maybe I was just in the zone and just kind of banged it out really, really quick to put this one together, but it's a really fun, simple, and I don't want to say simple in that there's not that many parts, but just, uh, you know, it's pretty, if you're familiar with the design, you can probably put this kit together without any instructions at all. Uh, you know, a lot of the parts are very easy to recognize and everything, so I guess what I want to say is that it's not simple, but it's designed in a very sensible, logical way. Anyway, like we're very familiar with with a lot of Bandai kits, but uh, this one, anyway, just also follows in that line. And it's a really nice kit, I gotta say. Really nice color separation details on there. For an HG kit, the seam lines are pretty minimal on this. 
So all in all, it's really nice. It is missing some small little color apps here and there that you'll have to paint in if you want it to be completely color accurate, but again, it's a high grade, so that shouldn't be com coming as too much of a surprise. But let's go ahead and check out all the accessories and everything here. So first off, for the hands, you've just got these two holding hands there for the left and the right, and then you've got a third hand option, which is a trigger finger hand, which is basically just for the rifle. Here is your beam rifle, it's basically just a two halves sandwiched together there and you have a separate piece for the camera which will move left and right and you have a couple of stickers there. A separate piece for the side handle which will move up and down there like that which I like it. It's kind of different in that it's like kind of more set on the side rather than like straight in the middle of the beam rifle which we normally see like on the RX-72 and like kind of normal beam rifles. So I like the shape and the design of this one, very similar to the RX-78s but different enough that I think it's a cool stylized version of that. We've of course got our two beam saber effect parts which are used with the beam saber handles stored up there on the backpack. You can just pop those out easily enough. And of course the shield where all the red parts you see on here are all stickers. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. And then the thoroughbred sticker is actually one of your sticker decals. So it's sticker on top of sticker to make that around here on the back. You do have some nice detail in there. Of course you'll have to paint all that in. And then this uh, looks like it could kind of move on a track there, but it doesn't. It's just fixed in place. Just the shield is connected via a ball joint there, but it can basically just rotate around. You can connect it onto either the back or the side of the arm, so you can choose there. One thing that I've talked about many times when I've talked about this design that I don't like about it is how far away the shield is from the arm when you have that plugged onto there, because it plugs onto the... I guess it's like the side of the arm technically, but it kind of seems more like the back of the arm because then when you go to bend the arm, this is not the like comfortable way to bend it. Uh, you're gonna want to rotate it like that in order to actually make full use of the elbow joint like that. So this is kind of more the back of the arm there already. Anyway, so there's just this massive gap there between the arm and the shield, which I think is just looks pretty terrible, unfortunately. Then we of course have our optional uh, shoulder equipment here. Uh, which goes onto there pretty easily enough. Again, that's just some sticker decals on there. You just lift up this little tab here on the top of the shoulder like that to have that opened up and then this just fits down in place there and you kind of close that up on the top and close this other one up here on the bottom to just lock that into place on the shoulder and it fits on there fine. It looks great. The color separation again looks really nice with the yellow parts being separate parts and the red and the white all looks nice. You don't really have any seam line there at all either. The only seam lines that we really have on the kit here are on the head and then back here on the fuel tank. So those are just two halves sandwiched together. So you got some uh, seam lines there. And I suppose you could count these like on the top of the torso there as well too, technically. And then a little bit on the beam rifle, as you may imagine. And let's see, a little bit on the Gatling gun here as well. But anyway, here is the Gatling gun with this piece on here, which is not necessarily meant to stay on there always. You can remove that if you want. That's just the attachment piece to plug this onto kind of the backpack. But all the design of that looks very nice, very similar to the Master Grade. You have a red sticker on here, where on the Master Grade that's an actual separate red piece. So uh, that's just kind of one downside of this HD version. But otherwise the design is pretty much exactly the same. The actual Gatling gun portion of that looks really nice. Among your leftover parts from this kit, you don't really have a lot of leftover parts, but among them, you have another beam right, or you have another Gatling gun barrel here, uh, where this is, I guess, just from the runner that was originally used for the Pale Rider. So uh, originally, this came with the Pale Rider space type, and uh, this was just on the same runner, but in this case, for this kit, it's molded in a different color, so they put it onto a different runner, so you just have a leftover. Uh, Gatling gun barrel so you could use this for some different custom kit bash or something so that's not too bad but anyway yeah this is just held in the hand and you have this flexible part which uh, this will plug up into the backpack and that should work pretty well uh, unlike the master grade version which is a little bit heavier because 1 100 scale of course this is very light so it shouldn't really give us much weight issues at all even the master grade though I didn't have that much weight issues despite its age it could hold its weapons pretty well but anyway it's a really cool design and obviously a big selling point of this kit and I think you know it looks nice there's a lot of nice detail on there just a little bit of seam on the top and the bottom and then that's pretty much it otherwise it's pretty good to go as for the rest of the stickers here on the kit we just have ones for the eyes the head camera there on the front 
and on the back we have the sticker here for the yellow V on the crotch right there and then down here down at the bottom of the leg you have a sticker there and on the top of the foot a sticker there as well too so I mean it's pretty easy color apps to paint in if you didn't want to use the stickers and you just prefer to paint those you shouldn't have too much trouble with that and I went over all of the articulation in my review of the Gundam 04 but I'll just quickly kind of go through this again here the head can go up nice and far on that so that's pretty nice just using uh, that double ball joint poly cap in there and then down to there so you've got plenty of room to move that around the detail on the head looks really nice as well too you have those yellow vents in the side being separate parts and so that looks really good it's just a matter of just getting rid of the seam line there on the side of the head in the torso section though however unfortunately you don't really have much in the way of movement there you could kind of pull that up off the ball joint a little bit to get a little bit of a ab crunch but because it's wielding a kind of heavy backpack and a kind of heavy weapon, having this to be, you know, a firm connection there and not getting too floppy or something, I guess, is maybe for the best. You may have a little bit of rotation there at the midsection as well, too. Shoulders will swing out to the front like that, which will be good for a two-handed grip on the weapons. So that's good. The shoulder armor will move up and you can bring the arm up to about 90 degrees. That seems to be about the extent of that. Rotation at the top of the shoulder, but then, like I said, you can also rotate, rotate it uh, below the elbow joint as well too for getting a better use of that double joint there in the elbow to get a nice full bend. Otherwise, if you have the arm rotated kind of like normally, then you can only get about 90 degrees like that. So just make sure you pay attention to that. You have the Vulcan uh, barrel there in the, or I guess machine gun barrel there in the side of the arm that you'll have to paint that in that little detail. Unfortunately, not a separate part. Again, on the master grade it is, but because it's a much larger scale. The wrist is just on a ball joint. The front skirts are joined, but you can clip those apart to make them separated if you prefer. But some nice color separation there, again, with the yellow and uh, to kind of dark gray parts. The side skirts will move up and down a little bit. The back skirt is just fixed and nothing moves on that. On the master grade, that's a little uh, kind of tab in the center that opens up, but on this one, it doesn't do anything. The back pack, nothing really moves on this. The thruster bells don't really move. This part doesn't necessarily move. So it's all just kind of fixed in place there. But again, it looks really nice. It's just missing some little bits of color application on there, basically for like these verniers there on the top and these details right in there. The hip joint will rock side to side up in there. Our legs can come out pretty far out wide to the side so no problems there. You can bring that up pretty far to the front as well too. You've got some rotation there at the top of the leg and a double joint here for the knee for a really nice full bend. The ankle joint is also pretty nice. It's just a basic ankle joint but you've got a pretty good gap there maybe more so than some would like. I could understand that but that should give you a really nice uh, bend side to side. The ankle armor, of course, moves up and down on its own. You can move the foot forward to there, back to there, all very nice. Pretty much full detail up underneath the foot, except for a little bit of hollow gap there at the toe, unfortunately. Then around here on the back leg, again, with some nice detail there, but uh, that's it. So overall, the articulation, very nice on this kit. And for a quick comparison here, it is with the 04 as well as the RX-782 Gundam, just so you can see they're right about all the same size as your standard HG-144 scale kit. And it's just really now making me wish that we had a 144 scale like, HG version of the Master Grade Verka design of the RX-782 because the Master Grade versions of these kits are based off of the Master Grade Verka Gundam. And I really like that design. It'd be great to see an HG-144 scale version of that. As much as everyone's gonna say, oh, we don't need another 144 scale scale RX-782 Gundam. I know, I know, I know, but I mean, the 144 scale version of the Verka, I mean, come on, that'd be cool, right? So overall, guys, obviously, I've got very positive feelings about this kit, and if you saw my review of the Gundam 04, then you kind of get the gist of it, because it's basically the same kit, just with a slightly different weapon. Uh, there are some pros and cons, of course, with this being a P-Bandai kit, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, and the Master Grade kit is quite cheap. You should be able to get the Master Grade kit for around $30 or something like that, which is very cheap for a Master Grade. Of course, it's an older Master Grade. It's got limited articulation compared to this it's got more seam lines but overall I think it's still a pretty good looking master grade so you know if you want if you like this design and you're not sure you want to spend the money for the HG certainly you know give the master grade a try but if you do want a little bit more articulation uh, a little bit just kind of nicer more updated kit overall then of course this one is, is is nice as well too definitely it's worth checking out if you don't mind paying a little bit more for it that said I did have a little bit of trouble with this kit as well too just regarding the the ammo belts going from the backpack to the Gatling gun just doesn't seem quite long enough and it's kind of 
tricky to work with. It kind of makes it really hard uh, to pose the Gatling gun actually. Whether you want to have the Gatling gun posed just on the backpack even, just having it up on the backpack is kind of hard to get it on there uh, just because of that uh, ammo belt and then getting it to be held in the hand. It's kind of tricky as well too and even doing a two-handed grip. I thought that would maybe give it a little bit uh, better grip on that but it's just kind of has a hard time holding on that because of the ammo belt just being not quite long enough. So that's a little bit unfortunate. It should have been like a centimeter longer would have been I think probably enough and that would have given it a little bit more slack and without still, you know, we don't want it to be like too long then it'll just go it's kind of weird just being so incredibly long. But I think, you know, it's still a good kit overall just that's one thing that I found a little bit kind of disappointing about that. So I'd wish that there was kind of a easy fix to that as well too, but unfortunately not necessarily an easy thing to fix without you know doing a little bit more work I don't know making something out of plot plate or something which would be quite the task but overall still a very cool kit let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below as always guys big thank you to USA Gundam store for making it all possible check out the link to USA Gundam store down in the video description below as well as my coupon code there that you guys can use to save 10% off everything there on the site so check that out thank you all for your support as well too liking the video commenting subscribing and uh, just watching the video as well too so really appreciate it you guys. Until next time, I hope you're all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.